Ghost forests are created when relatively sudden changes in the local environment causes rapid tree death. Some, but not all, ghost forests are created by the effects of climate change. In this video, I will explain how climate change can create ghost forests and some of the effects that ghost forests can have on the environment. Some ghost forests have been formed by tectonic activity, earthquakes and tsunamis. They have caused the rapid subsidence of a forested coastal region sufficient to allow the penetration of salt water into the area. One example of this is a great earthquake and tsunami that occurred in the year 1700 in the Pacific Northwest region of North America. This event literally drowned the coastal forest in a sudden flood of salt water that killed large number of trees in a very short time. In some coastal areas, sea level rise caused by climate change has been sufficient to cause salt water intrusion into coastal areas, particularly at high tide. This is a more gradual process, but sufficiently fast that over the course of a few decades, the trees die from the high level of salt in the water and the region transforms from forest to marshland. There are several examples of ghost forests formed by this process along the east coast of the United States, particularly in North Carolina, New Jersey, and Virginia. Other ghost forests have been formed by insect inf infestation in trees weakened by drought and rising temperatures related to climate change. In this case, bark beetles are the enemy. Healthy trees generated, generate resins that limit the effect that bark beetles can have on the tree. However, a tree weakened by drought often can't produce sufficient resin to control the beetle infestation and it dies. Here in California, more than 150 million dead trees have resulted from this process. The ghost forest in this picture was created by the great earthquake and tsunami that occurred around 9 p.m. on January 26th in the year 1700. The 1700 Cascadia earthquake occurred along the Cascadia subduction zone and had an estimated magnitude between 8.7 and 9.2. The megathrust earthquake involved the Juan de Fuca plate from mid-Vancouver Island in Canada, south along the Pacific Northwest coast as far as Northern California. The length of the fault rupture was about a thousand kilometers or 620 miles, and the average slip on the fault was 20 meters or 66 feet. The earthquake caused a tsunami which struck the west coast of North America and the coast of Japan. The most important clue linking the tsunami in Japan and the earthquake in the Pacific Northwest comes from studies of tree rings, dendrochronology, which showed that several ghost forests of red cedar trees in Oregon and Washington were killed by, the, by lowering of coastal forests into the tidal zone by the earthquake. The dead trees have outermost growth rings that formed in 1699, the last growing season before the tsunami. This includes both inland stands of trees, such as the one on the Copalis River in Washington shown in this picture, and pockets of tree stumps that are now under the ocean and surface and become exposed only at low tide. The trees shown in this picture died because they were flooded with salt water from the tsunami that followed the earthquake. This picture shows part of a ghost forest in the Pamlico Albemarle Peninsula of North Carolina. It is just one of many ghost forests along the East Coast and Gulf Coast of North America that have been created by the intrusion of salt water as sea levels have increased owing to climate change. We know from tide gauge and satellite data that the global average sea level has been rising throughout the 20th and 21st centuries, 
owing to the warming of the oceans and the melting of glaciers. We also know that the rate of mean several sea level rise has been increasing in the past several decades. However, we also know from this data that there are large variations in the amount of sea level rise from place to place. Some locations along the east coast of the United States have experienced larger than average increases in sea level driven by land subsidence and the effect of ocean currents. During the 20th century, the sea level rose about six inches or 15 centimeters along the coast of Maine, about a foot or 30 centimeters in the vicinity of New York City, but as much as a foot and a half, 46 centimeters further south along the coast. As salt water has moved into these areas, the existing pine trees died over a relatively short time, a few decades, and the area has become marshland as species of plants better adapted to salty water have taken over. This ghost forest is high in the mountains of Montana. At very high altitudes in parts of the Northwest, including Montana, the white bark pine is the only species of tree found. The cones of these pines contain seeds that feed several animal species in the region. Large swaths of these white bark pine trees have died from a disease called the white pine blister rust that was introduced into the region in the early 20th century. The blister rust killed a high percentage of the white bark pines, but some did survive. Scientists believe that the trees that survived the blister rust have some genetic property that makes them resistant to the disease. However, in the past few decades, these resistant trees have been fallen victim to a different predator, the mountain pine beetle. These mountain pine beetles are common and have been found in the region for a very long time, but it's only been during the past few decades that they have been killing white bark pines in large numbers. The reason appears to be drought and temperature increases caused by climate change. Healthy trees resist bark beetle infestations by producing resins which limit the damage that these beetles can cause. However, trees that are stressed by drought are not able to produce enough resin to keep the beetles from damaging the trees. High elevations in Montana are not the only places where bark beetles have been killing trees. In California, well over 100 million trees have died from bark beetle infestations. Again, climate change is the reason. Much of the southwest U.S. has been in drought for the past 22 years, and this has stressed several species of trees, making them vulnerable uh, to bark beetle infestation. There are several negative effects of ghost forests. First, living trees absorb CO2 from the atmosphere. The amount of CO2 that a living, mature tree absorbs from the atmosphere varies depending on many factors. On average, it's about 25 kilograms per year per tree, but can range from 10 to 40 kilograms per year. Not only don't dead trees capture carbon, they release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere as they decay. In fact, recent research shows that dead trees in coastal ghost forests can act like straws to funnel greenhouse gases from the surrounding soil into the atmosphere. In coastal areas, ghost forests usually are replaced gradually by marshland. Wetland plants generally are good at removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, so that helps to compensate to a large extent for the reduction of carbon dioxide removal by the dead and dying trees in the adjacent ghost forests. This is not the case, however, for the other ghost forests that we have considered. In the high altitude white bark pine forests, essentially all the animal species depend on the seeds in the pine cones for sustenance. 
So the death of large numbers of white bark pine trees in these high altitude ghost forests has a catastrophic effect on those animals, which include grizzly bears. In addition, the loss of shade in these high altitude ghost forests causes more rapid snowmelt. This reduces water quality and can have a serious effect on agriculture in those regions. Dead trees also are a major fire hazard. The hundreds of millions of dead trees killed by bark beetle infestations in the forests of, this, of the southwest of North America have been a major contributor to the rapid spread of wildfires in these areas. The more, these more frequent and more intense wildfires release very large amounts of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. There are government programs aimed at removing these dead trees, but progress has been slow because of the costs involved. The dead trees have, have no commercial value, so the agencies must pay contractors to cut them down and to remove them, and the budgets for this work are limited. In summary, ghost forests aren't merely an indicator of climate change. They actively contribute to it. Thanks for watching. I hope you have found this video informative. Please check out some of my other climate related videos. And if you haven't done so already, I would appreciate it greatly if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click or tap on a picture in the circle below.